Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, I continue on my one-man war against uh, the lack of proper mufflers uh, here in Texas. Um, I, it, it, I, some people pointed out that uh, the reason why people drive around in super loud cars like that is it's it's a mating call. Um, it's it's like uh, it's like the it's like the guy who is overly interested in your puppy in the Pacific Northwest. That, that person's not interested in your puppy. That person wants to fuck you. That's what's going on. Um, but anyway, it's it's a it's a Texas mating call. The only problem I have is that uh, it's a stupid mating call. Like I I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'd love to to survey more women and like so uh, when a car goes by you and it's just uh, it sounds like it's it's half broken. Uh, paint is peeling off the sides. Uh, they have uh, you know put a bumper sticker that says uh, you know come and take my guns uh, and I'll shoot you. Whatever it happens to be. Uh, <laughs> Not making a political statement with that. And it's just blasting its way down the road, you know, like this. Um, does that, are, are, do you get moist then? Is that, is that a moist moment for you? Like you're like, well, I don't know what else is going on in my day, but uh, I have, I have got, I, I'm, I'm dropping panties right now because that I need that guy inside me right this, this minute. I, I don't think, I mean, I have a hard time. I, I have a hard time buying that that's uh that's anybody's dream, but, but maybe so, uh, you know, a lot of people do a lot of stupid things. Uh, the real housewives of Atlanta is, is still a show people actually choose to watch. So I, I don't know. I have no, jo- I, I have no idea. Um, very well. So, uh, let's get to a mail. Cause this goes to, uh, you know, the number one, the, the comic book number one scheme, if you will, um, and I love this subject line because I think this this sums up both my opinion and it gives you the mail in in the in cliff notes. It says, "So are number ones doing like an idiot tax?" Okay, interesting premise. Let's see what let's see where this goes. It says, "Hey Perch, I'm noticing more and more often that number one issues of comics are $4.99 and then the rest of the series is $3.99. In some series, the first issue is $5.99. In fact, Batman 125." despite only being a first new creative team, was $5.99. This feels kind of like an idiot tax for me, where the big two know a lot of speculators are jumping on for number one and just upping the price to get extra cash, perhaps to supplement future sales drops. Uh, is this a smart strategy or a bad strategy? Well, I, I think you know where I'm going with this, but anyway, I mean, we'll finish the mail. I mean, I personally wouldn't mind a 9.99, 64-page first issue if that meant all subsequent books were 2.99 again, but I doubt we'll ever get that. Instead, it's like pay us two extra dollars and we'll give you a whole 10 pages of dialogue, as we saw in the Spider-Man relaunch. Uh, so I, I, lo- I like the way that said. Yeah, uh, number ones have become an idiot tax on people and shops and the entire business. Uh, the, the, the people in charge are well aware that there's a, a massive financial drop that goes on between issue one and issue two, and often even bigger between issue two and issue six. They know that that comic is moving down to a, you know, a curve line of, I don't know, less than, you know, less than half. And in Marvel's case, because of all the variants and other things, probably less than a fifth of the number one sales. So it is a take the money and run kind of strategy. And, and so, you know, your question, is this a smart or a stupid thing? I mean, it, it's smart in the sense of you're squeezing extra blood from that stone. And so you do get some extra cash. And, and quite frankly, in Marvel's case, and certainly increasingly DC's as well, it is how they are making their money. Um, I did some analysis a while back that said of, of Marvel's margin. So take out the comic store cut, take out the printing cut, just we're talking about the profit margin. How much of that profit margin that Marvel is, is grabbing is made up of number ones or anniversary issues or price spikes in the comic? And the answer, I was like, ah, I'll bet it's about a quarter. I'll bet it's about 25%. And when I did this analysis, it was more like uh, cl- getting close to 50%. It was like 46% of the profit margin was coming off of these anniversary issues, these number ones, these special comics. And it was, it was shocking to me, but it, it said something very clear, meaning Marvel can't stop now. They cannot reverse. If they did, they, they are looking at losing a, you know, all things considered a third or more of their current operating revenue. That, that would be catastrophic 
for them. Um, weirdly, it would not hit the comic book stores as much. Certainly, comic shops are getting their margin out of that that higher priced issue. But you know, keep in mind that if they're printing a, uh, it's, it's like what you said. You get ten extra pages of filler in a Spider Man issue at a jacked up price, and you know, most of that stuff is dialogue and everything else. The sunk cost of those ten extra pages are, you know, the writer and the creative team. But that's not much. I mean, when you're paying your writer, say, you know, $65, $75 a page, that's not a lot of, of extra money. To, to put it another way, if it's 10 pages of art, you can do this math yourself. That's $750 total. That's nothing. I mean, that, that is not a lot of money. The art may be double that, maybe. You're, you're, you're talking about, and, and coloring and everything else, you're talking about maybe $3,000, $4,000 in total spend for these uh, 10 extra pages. And for that, you can charge an extra $2 and $2 times, I don't know, 50,000. Again, you, you, you could do the math pretty easily. It's a hundred thousand in, uh, in additional revenue. Now you have to take the cuts out of there for $4,000 in spend. That's a good deal. If you're the publisher, you do more of that all day long because your margin is higher and it's, it's cleaner. You're not spending much to get to that extra amount of money. Um, if you're almost doubling the cost of the comic, you're not doubling your expenses. It's it's uh, it's anyway. It, it's a nasty situation. So um, it, it it is the idiot tax because people speculators are coming in. They're buying it for that number one issue. Uh, they don't care as much about the price because they're they're they believe they're buying it as an investment. So they uh, they're they're willing to take that that toll. And it's it's a negative system. So it is smart, in theory, for the publishers to do that. They're taking extra money in hand, but it's dumb. It's super dumb because it's starting to pivot. In Marvel's case, it's already done it. It's starting to pivot your entire business into something that's wholly based on speculators coming in and being comfortable with spending extra money. And there is a jumping off point for both speculators. Comic book uh, starts to die down and, and people are just not as interested anymore. The game is up. Or you just keep pushing that envelope higher and higher, and eventually the speculator's like, ah, even though I'm still interested in this, I'm not going to spend $20 for a number one issue. And by the way, if you don't think we're headed there, we absolutely are. You know, we're, we're already at a place where the anniversary issues are coming in at $10. Bucks. Uh, there's one that's being trialed, I think, in September uh, that's going to be, I think, $12.99. Okay, so $13.00. We are absolutely headed to $20 anniversary issue, number one issues. And, what, you know, it's just, it's testing to see if the market will go for it. But the problem with that is it's a one-way street. If, if you do that and the market doesn't go for it, it's very, very hard for you to reverse course without you as a company basically having to put up a bunch of loss. And that's exactly how it would look. Remember, a lot of these companies are not graded on... You know, if they're if if I made a hundred dollars in profit, and then next month I make fifty dollars in profit, they are not. Nobody comes and says, "Hey, congratulations, you made fifty dollars." Instead, they go, "Hey, you you lost fifty percent of your revenue." That's how they grade it. They grade it as a loss, even though you made money. So right now, if the business is propped up with a bunch of unhealthy kind of variant schemes and other other approaches, uh, it that. If, if they back away from that, and invariably they will have to, at some point, they're going to have to back away. Uh, at that point, they're going to take a loss, and that loss is going to be ugly. That's just the reality of where the business is going. That's, that's, where, that's where things sit. So, I, I mean, you know, I, you can avoid it as long as possible, but that, that, is, uh, that, that is our future. And in that sense, it's stupid. This idiot tax is uh, dumb on Marvel and DC's part. In this instance, Image is a much healthier business because they are they do not do these kinds of you know price jump relaunch schemes. And as a result, you know if and when the market starts to collapse in this area, uh, they they they're not going to fall. They didn't ever prop themselves up with this to begin with. So that's a better place for them to be. Um, it, it is, it, it's, this is one of those things where anyone who's, you know, studied finance and look at, at kind of collectibles market and any, any kind of, you know, business like this can see it coming. It's, it is like a, it's a train wreck where you absolutely know where this story is going to end. And everybody is just kind of, 
pretending that the world is going to go on forever like this. And, you know, it, we're, we're, we won't be around. And I've heard plenty of people say this of, well, I'll probably be retired for comics or I'll be doing my own thing, you know, by the time it collapses, which is just awesome. I mean, have a thing to say, again, what, what a, what a horrible uh, message of, you know, Hey, I know what we're doing right now is super predatory and bad. And, uh, you know, is, is harmful to kind of future generations of comics and ultimate sustainability. But, but I'm going to, uh, I'm, I've only got about five more years in this business. I'm going to do something else. I especially like the people who will go, I, I you know, I'm going to, I've got that Netflix deal that I'm pushing. I'm going to be in movies, so I won't have to ever put up with, uh, the consequences of any of this. Uh, so, you know, who cares? And, and literally that is the attitude. Yeah. Who cares? We'll, we'll, uh, it'll all work out. I mean, yeah, maybe, uh, but, uh, those are not the people you want running your business. The people who are, who are willing to drive the car off the cliff simply because, you know, you, they, they don't think they'll be around to go off with it. That is, that is not, uh, those people should not be in management positions. <laughs> you want those people as far away from decision-making as humanly possible. But, uh, but anyway, um, and thank you very much for the question. I, I do like the term idiot tax because I think that that sums up quite neatly what it is that's going on and, and ultimately uh, how this all shakes out. Um, let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments below. And thanks for listening.